the last time Nvidia launched a GPU as disappointing as the 5080, they actually unlaunched it before it hit store shelves. I'm not kidding. Do you remember there was gonna be two 4080s? There was gonna be a 16 gigabyte version, which we ended up getting, and then a 12 gigabyte version, which we didn't end up getting with that name. It got renamed a 4070 Ti and had the price cut $100. It was completely unprecedented, but guess what? That card, which was originally gonna be called a 4080, ended up being 17% faster than the 3080. So it was a 17% generational uplift if it had been called a 4080, if it had been called an 80 class GPU. And guess what? We just got the 5080 reviews. And if I use Tech Power Ups database for both, uh, we are seeing that the 5080 compared to the 4080, well, 100%, 87%, if you actually divide it the other way around to look at the same way that I'm looking at this one, that is about 15% faster. So actually the 5080 is a slightly smaller, but about the same generational uplift as NVIDIA was offering with the 30, sorry, the 4080 12 gigabyte, which got canceled. It got unlaunched. So NVIDIA learned the wrong lesson from unlaunching the 4080 12 gigabyte. The lesson that we thought we were teaching NVIDIA was, we don't want this, this is garbage. What NVIDIA actually learned was, how do we get away with it? So notice again that they were focused on the fact that there were two different 4080s. So they canceled and renamed the bad one and they kept the good one, although its price was still too high and they launched, relaunched it again under the name 4080 Super a year later with a $200 price cut. But anyway, that's not really the point of this video. Uh, the point is that well, how did they, if they're sitting back in their marketing room, okay, so we want to offer the crappy one, but we want people to accept it. How do we get away with it? Well, we shouldn't have a better card that also has the same name. So what they did is they have now with this generation eliminated the good one. There's no good 5080 this time. So that is the lesson that NVIDIA has learned. I'm not kidding, it's the same exact marketing campaign, like claiming that the 4080 12 gigabyte would be two times faster than the previous generation, again, using slides that are hiding the fact that that's only if you count frame generation. What is NVIDIA doing this time around? Oh look, the 5080, twice as fast as the RTX 4080, but only if you're including frame generation. If you look at the non-frame generated slides, it was clearly only about a 15% advantage, and that is what independent testing, including my own, has turned up. Again, in my testing, I compared against the, 40, uh, the 4080 Super and showed a 12% uplift. And then because the 4080 Super is only two or 3% faster than the 4080, that's again, about a 15% uh, uplift. So uh, another way of looking at this is this. This is the historical price and performance of 80 class GPUs. And Nvidia is really trying to pull something on us with this one. They are price anchoring with the crappy value 4080 and then offering us a worthless performance uplift and uh, trying to get away with it by calling it an 80 class GPU when it really, really shouldn't be. So take a look at this. Um, if we track 780, 980, 1080, 2080, 3080, 4080, 5080 uh, release years, their MSRPs, and then I've even adjusted their MSRPs into today's dollars using a Bureau of Labor Statistics inflation calculator, uh, we can see that they were generally around $850-ish, although the 980 was a particularly good deal at 728, until the 4080 came in after a crypto mining boom where Nvidia learned, oh, we can price things super high, except that people kind of rejected it and, and it had to get reclassified as a 4080 Super at $1,000. But see, that was that price anchoring because now you get the 5080 coming in at $1,000 and they want you to feel like, oh, it's $200 less than last, last generation, so that makes up for what's happened here. But it really doesn't, guys, because that means that it's uh, in, uh, you know, current dollars, a thousand dollars. But remember that the 80 class GPUs have typically been around 850, but it gets worse than that, guys, because given the generational performance uplift, this shouldn't even be called an 80 class GPU. 
This is a 70 Ti at best, maybe a 70. I mean, look at look at this column here, okay? So performance versus previous generation. I'm using Tech Power Up's relative performance database for this information, just to keep everything consistent uh, on, on that one um, uh, performance test metric. So we're seeing that the 780 was all, honestly not great, 24% faster than the 680, uh, but then the 980 delivered 38% uplift compared to that, the 1080 delivered 51% uplift compared to that, the 2080 delivered 39% uplift compared to that, the 3080 delivered 63% uplift compared to that, and did it without a price increase. 63% better performance and better performance per dollar. That's crazy. The 4080 jumped in at a 49% performance boost compared to the 3080, which if it had maintained the price or a similar price would have been a pretty exciting product, especially with the big jump to 16 gigabytes of VRAM, but they jumped the price up to $1,200. That was pretty awful. And then now we get $200 off of that, which is still way above normal, and we're only getting a 15% generational performance uplift. We have never seen in over a decade uh, of results here. So yeah, actually, actually, if we go back a decade to the 980, every result, had, the worst result was a 38% uplift. So 15% is completely out of the norm here. And remember that the 4080 also delivered a feature generation uh, with the uh, introduction of frame generation. The 5080 gets you a, a, an additional uh, amount of frame generation, which I would say going from no frame generation to frame generation is much less revolutionary than going to frame generation to even more frame generation. Um, even the 2080, which delivered... Um, a 39% performance uplift also delivered uh, you know, uh, the, the, all the new RTX features, which took a while to pay off, but I think we'd argue that now at least DLSS, even if you're not excited by the ray tracing performance of the 2080, uh, was at least delivering something as well. So it's not just that there's features generations and performance generations, uh, there's just um, you know some generations that deliver both. The 5080, if we look at what it is offering us, is just historically bad, and I would argue should be called a 70 class GPU, maybe a 70 Ti if you'd like, just like how Nvidia unlaunched the 12 gigabyte 4080 and renamed it a 4070 Ti with a price cut, and it still didn't review super well at that point, and that's important to uh, to note. Now, uh, do I have anything else to back up that claim? Well, I mean, you could look at the amount of cores compared to the flagship where we are historically cut down. The 5080 is only about half the cores of the 5090. Um, but you can also just look at per generational performance uplifts. Wh where would this make more sense? So for example, the 5080 can't beat a 4090. It can't beat the previous generation flagship. That's another way of looking at this. Now, is that normal? Uh, well, let's look at a few things. Was the 30, uh, you know, let's go back to the, the 2080 maybe. So was the 2080 faster than the 1080? Yes, so the, uh, and not just the 1080, but the 1080 Ti. So the 2080 could beat the previous generation flagship 1080 Ti. Remember there was no 90 class at that time. Uh, if we go to the, um, the 3080, uh, the 3080 definitely beats a 2080 Ti, which again, there was no 90 class at that point, uh, and it beats it fairly handily. Uh, and then if we look at the 4080, despite the fact that its price was awful, its generational performance uplift was not awful. And the 4080 did in fact beat both a 3090 and a 3090 Ti. But now we are getting the 5080, which is significantly slower than a 4090. It's, it's not a tie. And, and I've got some of my own head-to-head -head testing that, that we'll be able to compare with that soon. And it is, again, just massively cut down from the flagship uh, product. So again, this is a historically bad generational uplift and Nvidia is trying to get away uh, with what they failed to get away with last time by just not giving us the actual 5080. Like, what would it? What would a 5080 have done uh, if it met our our uh, generational expectations? Well, notice that if we had something a bit faster than a 5080, if we had something that was offering more like, well, what would be normal? Again, uh, 
even asking for 40% generational performance uplift is pretty typical, or even a 30%, somewhere around a 30, 40% generational uplift would be pretty typical. What if we got that? So if I set the 40, 80 as the baseline, um, oh, about 30% faster would have it matching or beating the 40, 90. If we got a typical 80 class generational uplift, it would beat the 40, 90. We didn't, and it doesn't. And all of the previous 80 class GPUs used to beat the highest end gaming GPU from the previous generation. So no matter how you're looking at this, this doesn't really make sense. So um, hmm. also, isn't it fairly normal for a 70 class GPU to beat the previous generation's 80 class GPU, at least by a bit? Because notice the 5080 is only beating the previous generation's 80 class GPU by about 12%, 12 to you know, 15% in my testing. Uh, okay, so let, let's look at some stuff. So does a 3070 beat the previous generation's 80 class? Yes, in fact, it's, it's right around the, the previous generation's flagship 2080 Ti. Uh, does a 4070 beat the previous generation's 80 class? Well, it's pretty dang close. It, 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 it's not quite there, but it's close. So what we're seeing here is now with the uh, 5080, it, it, in so many ways, how cut down it is from the flagship, its generational performance uplift, its inability to beat the previous generation flagship, but to more match the 80 class, this all feels like it's a 70 class GPU that should have been unlaunched and probably should have come in around 800 to uh, 750 or so. And we should have had an actual 5080 uh, that uh, for $1,000 if they want to price it as that. Although again, gen historically, 850 would have been a better price for an 80 class GPU. Uh, again, look at that price anchoring that's happening here. Anyway, I feel like I'm just ranting because I am. So I already published my big head-to-head -head 5080 versus uh, uh, 4080 Super. Feel free to watch that. I'll have a lot of other head-to-heads coming up. The 7900 XTX, got that head-to-head. -head. The 4090, got that head-to-head. -head. Uh, 5090, I've got that head-to-head. -head. I've also got the benchmarks for the 3080, and we'll get that head-to-head -head as well. Uh, but it will take time to produce the voiceovers and graphs and whatnot. So over the next week or so, expect a lot more 5080 head-to-heads. There's already some of the side-by-side -side footage without the full video prepped uh, available to channel members, so you could check that out. And, uh, well, I hope you all have an excellent day.